I'm Mary Lloyd Ireland. I'm an orthopedic surgeon and practice at the University of Kentucky. Contact information is down below. We do have a university YouTube channel, and I also have a personal website that is MaryLloydIreland.com. This and other narrated videos will be on that website as well as the PDF. This talk is on hand and wrist, diagnosis, and imaging. I have nothing to disclose. There's no relevant financial relationships to be discussed directly, indirectly, referred to, or illustrated with or without recognition within this presentation. In the ulnar deviated wrist, the hook of the hamate acts as a pulley. There's a large resultant ulnar vector and there's shearing against the hook of the hamate that causes pain. So put them into ulnar deviation, resist flexion of their ring and small finger for a diagnosis. This is what a carpal tunnel view looks like. Again, the wrist is maximally dorsiflexed. Can be hard to get someone back in that much dorsiflexion, but this very well shows the hook of the hamate. A CT scan can also be done, but if you can get a good view here, you can see the hook of the hamate fracture. This is a normal x-ray, carpal tunnel view. These angled views, again, this is the hook of the hamate. This is an example of a hamate fracture. You can see this best on this carpal tunnel view. You get a su suggestion maybe of a hamate fracture here, but it's best seen on the carpal tunnel view. Plain x-rays, the carpus and the hamate. This is a PA view. You can't see very well. And again, you can get different supinated degrees or degrees of oblique to better show the fracture that you can see here, an acute hamate fracture. CT scan is helpful in the diagnosis of a hook of the hamate fracture, as shown here, 3D on the left and a 2D CT on the right. Excision of this hook typically is what has to be done. In summary, hook of the hamate fracture should not be missed. Have a high index of suspicion based on the history. Include resistive finger flexion and ulnar deviated wrist and palpation over the hook of the hamate as part of your exam. Request a CT scan rather than an MR for a hook of the hamate or a bone problem to confirm the clinical diagnosis. Special thanks to Dr. Steve Carter, Cape Town, South Africa, for this information. The wrist, the TFCC disorders, you can assess that, repair it or debride it. The ulnar-sided wrist pain is like low back pain. It's a small little area, not very rewarding to treat. The structures are very small. TFCC injuries can be diagnosed and should be diagnosed and then referred to hand surgeon. By history, it's a single episode or chronic overuse, TFCC problems. Grip style, it's a loose grip. Swing style, spin or double or single-handed, dominant hand. What do we think about with ulnar-sided wrist pain? Swelling, point of maximum tenderness, provocative testing. Extensor carpi ulnaris is outlined here. You can have a primary tendonitis of this or a subluxation. The TFCC is right there too, so again a very small area. The things that we would think of would be a TFCC injury, instability of the distal radial ulnar joint, or drudgery. And then if it's more in a tendon distribution like this, think of a problem with the extensor carpi ulnaris. On physical exam, Tendonitis, subluxation, ulnar carpal impaction. This can depend on the length of the ulna. You can have the ulna being longer or shorter, ulnar positive or negative. 
You can also have the TFCC injury. On the volar side, you can have a flexor carpi ulnaris tendonitis or lunotriquetral ligament tear or triquetral hamate impaction. And don't miss a hook of the hamate problem, which is where this star is. That would be where the hook of the hamate would be. So this gives you markings of what to think about with ulnar-sided wrist pain, common in a racket sport athlete. This is what the TFCC complex looks like by drawing. So there is a little annular disc here. Again, a very small joint. Ligaments aren't that stable or big, so you can go in and debride this fiber cartilage. Some people repair it. Ulnar-sided wrist pain has also been classified as drudgery by Richard Berger of the Mayo Clinic. Dr. William Kleinman, Indiana Hand Center, is quoted as saying, I've spent over 25 years studying an area of the wrist that measures one square centimeter. As clinicians that take care of active sports-related injuries, I think we need to make the diagnosis of what is going on with an ulnar-sided wrist pain. However, the surgery is not as successful as an early diagnosis of radial-sided wrist pain for a scaphoid fracture or scapholunate disassociation. So we must make the diagnosis, but the ulnar-sided wrist pain in that small area is harder to treat surgically, but we must strive to make a diagnosis acutely. Shifting gears a little bit now, what about the skeletally immature? In a gymnast, somebody doing repetitive axial loading on their wrist, you can have a distal radial growth plate arrest and then the ulna continues to grow, so you end up with a relatively long ulna, which would cause ulnar-sided wrist pain and some impaction of that distal ulna. This is a bit like little leaguer's shoulder, so the injury is at the growth plate. This is the proximal humerus fracture, stress fracture in a thrower, little leaguer's shoulder. This is what that now early physial growth arrest because of repetitive loading in a gymnast, and then relative overgrowth of the ulna. Since the distal radius is the main weight-bearing area, the axial load goes through that. So again, getting x-rays of both sides, measuring the distances of the distal ulna and radius is important. Distal radial epiphyseal fractures, gymnast wrists, the symptoms are wrist pain. X-rays initially will show a widened distal radial epiphysis, epiphyseal plate, trend toward negative ulnar variants. Then they hire a higher than normal 80% load on the radial epiphyseal plate. More ulnar positive variants, not associated with wrist pain. 59 gymnasts in this study, average age of 9.3 years, 83% had wrist pain, and outside of that age group, 44% had wrist pain. In a radiographic survey, 60 gymnasts, there was a delay in maturation for the females. Five abnormal wrist x-rays in these 60, that was four females and one male, Look for widening and irregularity of the distal radius in the highly competitive gymnast. Look for arrested growth. Look for positive ulnar variants in Salter 1 or 2 fractures. Larger scale studies are needed to really draw any conclusions, but be aware of the highly competitive gymnast who has wrist pain that it could indeed be a radial growth plate fracture distally. Do a history and physical before imaging studies. Get the appropriate x-rays based on what you feel the diagnosis is. Cone views, oblique views, depending on what joint and bone is involved. Imaging studies may overdiagnose hand disorders, such as an MRI scan can overdiagnose problems, whether it's in the hand or the foot. You must correlate your exam with imaging studies. History and physical overrides imaging. 
I've talked a lot about physical exam and x-rays. I did want to mention treatment of hand and wrist problems. There are many, many companies that make braces, splints of the hand and wrist. One company has 29 different braces for forearm, wrist, hand, and thumb. Know what braces you're fitting. Some of them are molded to the patient. Make sure you communicate well with whether you want the thumb included in a thumb spica or not included. Make sure if it's a fracture and they have swelling that the, the splint fits well to prevent any skin problems, which can be common in a very swollen wrist. Put in a too tight cast or a brace that doesn't fit. There are waterproof, reformable, removable braces. You can heat them up, fit them, mold them to fit the patient. Wrist sprains require compression and splinting until painless range of motion is possible, then functional exercise and sport-specific activity. Kinesio tape can be used for axial load or bat or racket sports. The treatment of wrist sprains includes compression and cold, but not directly on the skin. Putty is good, doing active motion, doing other, using other materials for padding and restoration of active motion, and keep the intrinsic muscles activated. You can immerse the hand in warm sand or wax. Local modalities can include ultrasound, ionophoresis, and many others. But in general, active movement of the hand will help with swelling. There are creams. It is important to get someone that you trust and knows hands, such as an occupational therapist, hopefully one that has had hand specialist training, athletic trainers, or patients to work on an intense reduction of the swelling and restoration of function program, and you must splint appropriately and respect the skin. In conclusion, Make sure your diagnosis is correct. Many wrist sprain diagnoses are not. And don't miss a scaphoid fracture, carpal instability, TFCC injuries, or hamate fractures in athletes and active people that you're treating. Thanks to Bill Dexter, Portland, Maine, Martin Boyer, Wash U, and Ruben Gulula, Middleton, Tifi, at the Mellon Rott Institute of Radiology for use of some of the slides in this presentation. Waterbuck, the end. Thank you.